audience. So it was a great phone call to get from you after I got elected. I have the great, great honor tonight of introducing and presenting a proclamation to someone who means so much to me. As I'm standing here at this Irish celebration, I'm thinking about my grandmother's grandmother of the name McGrath, who came here in the 1800s by herself from Ireland as a teenager. She was a seamstress at Macy's. And I sometimes think about how terrifying that journey must have been back then. And I think about what she must be thinking if she could be here, what she would think about what we're doing now. First of all, she'd probably be amazed that the Irish were having a celebration in City Hall by the time in her day, the vicious discrimination that occurred against the Irish. I wonder what she'd think about her great, great, great grandson being a member of the city council. That's cool to think about. And I know she'd be so proud that we here are celebrating Irish culture and continuing that celebration. So that's one reason why I'm so proud to be part of the Irish caucus and happy to be here. I am uh, really excited to be presenting this proclamation to my friend, Council Member Danny Drum, someone who I've looked up to my entire career. And Danny's legacy in the city is so tremendous for the Irish community, his contribution with this Irish caucus, and fighting for all the cultural institutions. In the council district, I represent the Irish Arts Center, an incredible cultural institution that is so amazing.
And Justin, I said to Justin, um, something similar to you, Keith. I said, Justin, are you Irish? And he said, well, yeah, maybe uh, 25% or a little bit more. I said, you're in. <laughs> we're in. We're in. We're in. <laughs> and we really, we really brought Justin in. And then of course I got a hold of Bob, and I said, Bob, I said, Bob, are you are Yes, he's in. Okay, he's in. And Bob also um, is an animal rights person, as am I. And uh, Bob actually helped me secure my little Yorkshire Terrier, uh, Lincoln. So Bob, thank you for all that, and all support for animal rights uh, stuff as well. Eric, of course. And then my successor, uh, it took my seat, Shaker Krishnan, <laughs> an honorary Irishman over here. And in Spanish, we say, un hindu, que puede hablar español. She got Shaker to speak Spanish. And uh, we have a lot of Chino and some of the community in, in, in our district, or the Shaker's district now, of course. To my good friend Lynn Shulman, the first uh, lesbian elected from the Borough of Queens as well. And uh, also to Linda Lee, who represents Eastern Queens, and whom I met uh, many years ago, uh, fighting for um, additional funding for the Asian community. They had an organization at that time called 13 Percent and Growing. Now it's called, or once, then, it, then it, before I left the council, it was called 15 Percent and Growing. And I think now it's called 18 Percent and Growing. <laughs> So uh, it's a great coalition of people, and uh, very similar to us, kind of the end of the world, the for, for, uh, for money and for funding for our cultural organizations. I also want to thank the speaker um, of the city council, Adrian Adams, of course. Um, you know, Adrian was in the council, we shared um, the seats in the council, she was on the finance committee, and we worked very hard and very close together uh, to make the council an even better place. Let me thank Mike Cusack, some of Mike Cusack. We traveled to Ireland at least three times, maybe four times, and we had very high level meetings um, with uh, government officials, including the president of Ireland, Michael Higgins, on a number of occasions. We had the last time we were over, we were there mostly to support Belfast, which needs a lot of support, especially at this time. <laughs> Jimmy Breslin, and um, the aunt, uh, the, the, the nephews of you know, their aunt, uh, Deirdre Breslin, and Deirdre Breslin worked for me in my office, <laughs> and of course uh, Ronnie was uh, also married to Jimmy for many years, and um, I couldn't make it to the street name, and James will never forgive me for that, but uh, they will all be going to the areas tonight for drinks afterwards, <laughs> later on, so congratulations to you also. Um, and I also want to thank the Irish consulate who was here uh, and for all the work that they have done and, um, and are doing and all the work that they did as well on the issue of marriage equality um, and also bringing us folks, the LGBT community, into the fold of the St. Patrick's Day Parade on Fifth Avenue, the New York City St. Patrick's Day Parade. When I started the Irish caucus, um, it was really to continue our, our traditions, our culture, and our heritage and mostly really to make sure that they got the funding that they deserve. And so during my tenure and continuing on now on the leadership of Keith and the other members, the four members of the Irish caucus, by the way, they are all terminated out, so we have to find another Irish person <laughs> to run for office to continue this tradition. Uh, but the idea of continuing the funding uh, for our, our Irish institutions here in the city is something that's really important, just as continuing our Irish cultural celebrations like this as well, and keeping an Irish presence visible and strong in the city of New York. Um, I want to also thank uh, Hillary Byrne, Sean Lane, and the, all of the members of the St. Patrick's Committee, uh, the parade on the Fifth Avenue. That's why I am wearing this set tonight. So, you know, uh, we were LGBT groups after much struggle, and Brendan Bayless is, is here, I think he's still here, he's right over here. Kathleen Walsh is here. Kathleen Walsh is here. But for 25 years, we struggled to be included, to be able to march in that parade under our own banner. And it finally happened in 2016, and it was really one of the proudest moments for me. Uh, and then uh, we have developed this good relationship. And so Sean Lane came to me, uh, and he said to me, Danny, I'd like you to be uh, the 
CFO of the Fifth Avenue St. Patrick's Parade. So I'm wearing my official board staff tonight. Democratic leader. 
considered in the uh, borough of Queens. Tom had voted against the gay rights bill in the, I guess it was the 70s. Uh, when, when was he in the council? When was he, he left? He was in the council in the 70s? 75, yeah. So at the, in the beginning, so um, now I was getting very politically involved. And in 2002, I wanted to become a Democratic district leader. Democratic district leader is one step toward becoming a public elected official. But to do that, you had to go in and you had to see Tom Manning. So Tom had an office, a legal office, on, 90, on uh, 95th and Queens Boulevard. And um, I walked in, I sat down outside, and you wait for Tom to open the door. And he opened the door, and before I could get through the door, he says to me, I guess you don't like me too much, Dan. And I said, hey, what do I say? I'm thinking in one second. I said, of course, Congressman. I said, let me just tell you something. It took us all 20 years to come to terms with who we are as LGBTQ people. And that just calmed him down. And he, I mean, not that he was riled up or anything like that, but he was like, oh, let me show you my pictures of when I was in the uh, police department. Let me show you my freshman class in the city council. And that's how we developed our friendship from there on. And I do remember that the year that Tom died, which was 2006, Christine Quinn was the speaker of the city council at that time. And we had our women's luncheon. It was probably the last women's luncheon that Tom attended. And he called me over. He was up in the days. He said, Danny, Danny, come here, come here. And he said, I said, what is it? I want you in that parade. And he had just worked really, really hard to get Christine Quinn elected as the speaker of the council, the first lesbian speaker of the city council. And so I will never forget that. And unfortunately, he passed away that following summer, around the middle of July or so, if I'm not mistaken. So thank you to the Mantons for being here. And it's a real honor to be able to accept this award on behalf of, of Tom Mantons. Uh, and then I just want to say that the Fifth Avenue Parade, the New York City Parade, New York City St. Patrick's Parade, um, this year is honoring Kevin J. Conway. And the theme for the parade this year is food insecurity. And that's something that's really very important to me as well. I live on 78th Street in Jackson Heights, and I look out my window, we have a storefront church just down the block from where I am. And every Tuesday, the line for food for that church goes two or three blocks down the road. And so there are still many, many people in New York City who are suffering from food insecurity. And I congratulate and thank Kevin Conway, the Grand Marshal, and the Parade Committee for making that part of their theme this year. And then finally, let me just say also, this to me, St. Patrick's Day to me, is about moving on. Moving on from our differences, talking about reconciliation, and I always think that, you know, we can reconcile our differences in Northern Ireland, we can certainly reconcile our differences here in New York City. Thank you very much.